issue of scaling. Scaling and also how do you serve many people at the same time and how do you do it in a way that it is um, feasible and well doesn't kill your machine. Now in the good old times or well, more like the good old bad times we used to do this thing of a continuous poll and probably you guys always thought about this it's probably the easiest way of doing it which is you simply have a function that keeps on calling the same thing over and over and over again maybe every one second every 10 seconds now imagine what happens if you have one person making a request every second uh, you can go and calculate it you will have 60 requests in a minute times 60 for the hour times 24 you start seeing the picture and that's one person what happens if instead you have maybe 200 people logged in or 1000 now you start understanding that you get hundreds and hundreds of people basically trying to create a DDoS on your own server that is actually one definition of a DDoS attack because you have so many people just trying to hit the server all at the same time so how can we go and try to solve this problem there are some ways around it one of the ways is to use different methodologies like a socket a socket is the simplest way of using the generic uh, subscriber and publisher mechanism it would basically have maybe a server which publishes a socket and then everybody subscribe into it and once you subscribe you're also able to um, inject things onto that socket so let's have a look so if we were to define this I was just gonna quickly draw it just to give you an example let's say that we have one here so this is our server and then potentially the server will have you know can have many people connected so a client here another client here another client here it doesn't matter it can have you know this can be client X this can be client 1 and this can be client 2 and then so on so on so on as many as you like but you only have one so what happens if you try to make this more sustainable yeah it becomes very complicated because normally the way that people would think about doing it is to do like i said the continuous poll what does that look like um i guess i can quickly go and show it um let's say that i had some space here to do it i'm just gonna write a small script so in kindergarten i guess one way of doing it would be something that would look like uh, uh, set interval uh, equal function and then we have um, I mean, uh, can never remember this part uh, but tunk, let's say every 1000 seconds a b a function oh. I forget things as well and then we say every 500 milliseconds and in here we're gonna do a jQuery get um, let's say that we're gonna get from the local host API data and uh, what else do we do and then we have a callback result So this would be the simplest way of doing this. Um, I guess what we can do is just to, you know, uh, we can use this data to update the UI. So this would be the one way of doing it, which is very non-performant. It's extremely bad, so please don't do it. Um, so what is the better way of doing it? But let me re-explain re this how it works. You basically set a set interval and you say that every 
set amount of time you want to repeat the same action so every 500 milliseconds or every half a second we're basically calling the server that's all we're doing so uh, but what can we do then is this really bad um, can we improve this maybe we can go and say you know we don't want to hit it as much and we say let's hit it every five seconds instead uh, which can be a good way but what happens if the information that is coming through happens after two seconds from the last call well in that case then you have an issue because you wasted three seconds so as you can see it's not performant at all it doesn't really solve problems i can understand if people want to do it but this is a terrible terrible way of trying to mimic real time data things happening so don't do it so how can we do this instead well, we go back to what we um, have stopped calling it for a very long time, which is a bus, um, which is kind of using a bus. So we can imagine that this is our bus. And we can imagine that this is our bus. And on this bus, We have subscribers and publishers so we can say that um, the server would be a publisher so they um, they subscribe to it if i can find an arrow um, but in reality generally the server will be subscriber and publisher as well and then you will have the opposite which is um, people would be um, subscribers instead now we're not going to go through the actual how this whole mechanism works we can sometimes just imagine that things do work for magic and we can just imagine that when there is an event a published event on this bus anyone who is subscribed will basically get notified of that so how do we make that happen um okay we can go and actually have a look at it i actually have this on my boilerplate so let me just go and and just show you on my boilerplate which should be here uh no material So this one already works, everything is already there. And we can have a look at quick look at the code. So this is what we use. We use this package which is socket.io. And the one thing that you may notice is that we don't actually write the app in as we used to. Normally we could just go and create the app and then we just instantiate the app. In this case, we have to do something a little bit more complex. It's just an extra step, which is basically to say that we do create the app, but then we also create an HTTP server and we bind that server to the app. Logically, it doesn't change much, but we simply need this because the socket has to bind to the HTTP server. It's just the way it is. Um, what else do we need to do next? we need to actually go and create the socket so we can say uh, do we have something happening on this socket at the moment yes so this is a socket here io.on so when somebody connects then we can say that the user is connected and when somebody disconnects from the socket, it will send a message and say disconnected. So at any given time, we do know who is on and not on the socket. So we actually can keep track of things. And this is really good from a um, point of view of scalability and monitoring, because we can say that as soon as we see, you know, maybe 300 people logged in, then we stop everything and we start increasing the number of resources um, 
and here this is the actual publishing so you can see here I'm actually just doing a set interval so basically I am just doing a dummy function that every one second it emits so this is the actual verb that we need to use this is the actual function so on that socket we emit we emit and we need to provide the actual topic so this is the topic or the identifier and we pass something to it so basically we're saying every one second generate a random number and publish it on the socket called uh, number on the which which has the type number so if we go and have a look at the client instead it should be here uh, public we can have a look at the source index so this is a normal web page and you should be able to see it where I call it um, so this is where the actual uh, script is um, just loading the socket IO into the web page and then we can actually see how we handle it so in the environment we can see that we create a socket instance and then we subscribe to the number socket to a socket of type number of topic number um, identifier number anyway that number is just a name we could have called it cows if we wanted to or chicken or apple doesn't matter um, it's just saying that we are subscribed to this um, and basically what I'm doing is just when I receive something when every anytime I hear something I just log it out let me see I can actually go and show you this part I should have it up and running I believe so if I just find my terminal uh, CD dev. Uh, uh, which one am I using? I guess it's the polar plate. Uh, let's, let me say npm start. If it's not taken, um, I don't really remember if this has a socket. Let me just see if this one has a socket up and running. Uh, cat server. Uh, da, 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 da. So this does have it does have it so I'm gonna run it So npm start so this is exactly the same code So I'm gonna go for Local host uh, 3000 Okay Now apart from the cats um, what you need to look at is if we go into the actual console you should be able to see this so this is actually the code that I'm calling and so you can see that every time something gets published on that it will appear here and what I can do is I can go here and if you look if you look on the terminal you can actually see that now I have another user connected so I have so these are two people subscribed so from the server point of view nothing has changed it's still using the same amount of resources whether it is one or two or three so it's much much um, better handled and now you can see that if I try to reload you can see that for a moment it was disconnected so you can actually see it here that it does say it was disconnected and that's because well for a moment it was so this is one way that we can handle this and I guess if we wanted to really go and play around with this a bit um, what I could do I could quickly load it and we can try to do a very simple work around it um, boilerplate yeah sure uh, do you want to save this no not really don't need to save it um, so what do we want to do with this realistically so we have something happening um, 
we have a socket Let's have a look. What can we potentially go and do with this? This is taking way too much space. Actually, I don't need it because it's on my terminal anyway. Uh, so I have the socket here. Um, so let's think about this for a moment. What I can do is I'm going to get, uh, you know what, next to this, I'm going to try and manipulate this. So I'm going to say um, a span. I'm going to say id equal socket out, just to know that it is there. Um, let's just try it out. Now I'm going by memory here. Let's have a look. That's saved, so I'm going to go socket out. So I'm going to do this. Um, my jQuery might be a little bit rusty. Socket out dot HTML. Uh, same message. Let's have a look. This one did work. Okay, yes. So as you can see, this number. Oh, wait, no, you cannot see. My bad. So as you can see, this number is continuously changing. And that's because that's the last one that is coming from the actual um, um, from the server. So this is one way of doing things. So you can communicate with many people all at once. You know, this would be the principle for having um, uh, for having dynamic pages or chatbots or chat rooms. It's really the simplest way of doing things. And I guess the simplest way also to try and let's say showcase data. So yes, well, these are sockets and this is what you need to try and get some real time things happening. Um, sockets, they can be a little bit daunting the first time. Um, you will make mistakes like I have made many times, but if you can master them, they really make your life a lot easier. So yes, try to create your first project using a socket, um, super simple. Uh, just try to do something like I did. One thing could be to try and maybe create like an Instagram kind of paper, um, sorry, kind of page. And so when whenever somebody tries to, not tries, whenever somebody posts something, posts a new picture, then automatically everybody gets updated. And the good thing is, what you can do is, you only push things to the users if you have new things. So you don't have to like every 10 seconds to make a call, you just make the call and that's it. Once uh, you just make the call when it's actually needed. So that's all. Thank you and we'll see a little bit more about uh, sockets and how to use real time and how to maybe um, do some more complex data handling in the very near future. Thank you. Bye bye.